Good afternoon, dear friends. Despite of early morning and the third day, we have full house. Thank you, everyone, for coming. No surprise, because today the topic is rather unique and the speaker is rather unique. As for the topic of the presentation, in general, artificial intellect was created not today and not yesterday, because I'm not young. I remember like in 70s or 80s of the last century, there was a surge of popularity, including the public mass printed media. It's quite obvious during that time the topic experienced long journey. If in the past it was something like flight to Mars, today we clearly see that artificial intelligence is next to the concepts and categories with which it was impossible to imagine, not theoretically, but in practical life. It's all right to have intelligence winning the game with the world champion of chess. Specialists say that artificial intelligence can win the goal because in chess, there is a big number of the variants. In Go, it's unlimited number of the variants. And it's believed to be breakthrough. Artificial intelligence is next to automobile transport, self-piloting automobiles using artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is next to the organization of the air traffic. We know that in our country, in Sberbank, German Greff promotes this topic. And recently I saw the message that in Sberbank there was termination of more than 1,000 lawyers just because Sberbank purchased artificial intelligence software that helped to substitute human forces. And this is a story of the difference. It's penetration in our lives. It's not flying to Mars or day after tomorrow, but this is happening today and now. In this sense, from one side, the view of the artificial intelligence, uh, from applicable side, from business point of view. On the other hand, it's the view of Professor Chinigovskaya, who is the specialist of neuroscience, psycholinguistics, artificial intelligence. Tatiana is not only one of the most renowned in the country's specialist, but she has unique gift to make the most complex things to explain very simply and eligibly. That's why I finished my commentaries. And it's interesting to listen to the speaker based on the fact that Tatiana will be speaking and later will be able to ask any questions. Tatiana, you're welcome to the microphone. Thank you very much for invitation. It's very interesting and dangerous to be in such place because anything but not economics in my luggage. As for whether it will be possible to explain in simple words what I think, let's see, because I do the ex prompto. cannot tell you how it will work out. I will start from afar, but naturally I'll come to the top. On this picture, you see where people are walking with skis and sledges and the internet was disconnected. Everyone recalled that they see life on one side. On the other hand, this monster that is flying and there's machines in his head and somebody is piloting this monster. 
Outstarts from this. There are many forecasts of people who like to make forecasts about what's ahead of us. I'll start from saying what is written here, and that is Anthropocene. We believe in geological epoch where we live when man determines life of planet in December. There was a presentation of the Roman club due to the jubilee of 50 years. The Roman club prepared report. Roman club is intellectual assembly that analyzes situation and presents the results of analysis to the global community, including elites. I haven't finished reading it. It's very big. It's about 200 pages, but it's it's very interesting, and it says what I will be telling you, but I read it after I prepared this presentation. It says that uh, we're playing too much with technological games, that those games are dangerous, not in the technical sense of which I'll tell you later also. It's about thinking. We can lose control over development of the situation, and no one knows what will happen if we trust too much in technologies. So the question is, what will people do if technology is doing things fine? I'm not saying that there's replacement of the lawyers for the, by software. It's a simple story, but I mean in general, if decisions will be done by powerful supercomputers and all life will be provided, will we have place in this life? Of course, we are in the paradoxical world because this is the world that, on one hand, opens huge opportunities for us, but every person in this room excellently imagines, on the other hand, the same world led us to a situation when we have to make choices, and we don't know how we will be making choices on one hand. There's temptation to have so many opportunities. And at the same time, they make this world dangerous. And we make a choice between opportunities and security. What we'll select, the different scenarios, this is one of them, so-called Isles, the orbit on community, and it says here on the screen, and the key idea, it's not clear whether the states exist as powerful units or some transnational, trans countries, some clouds. So this is possibly different social arrangement, but this is not subject of my knowledge, so I will not tell you. But for the last time, I'll mention the Roman Club presentation, which says that we need to have new education and the epoch of rethinking of key civilizational principles, for instance to refuse reductionism, and I'll explain very quickly what does it say, what does it mean in many things, including science. The natural science where I work has a starting point of analysis. It takes an object and chops into portions, so we chop into the nanoparticles, we have strings there. How long will be playing this game? But the most important is that probably the initial point is wrong because many large big philosophers said at the time where this uh, chopping of matter didn't start yet, they said that the whole is bigger than the part. It's point one. And the second point I will mention. The second point, is it really true that what natural sciences research is some kind of independent field for us? This is how modern science looks. The scientist sits in the auditorium and watches what's on the stage. There's world on the stage, and he sort of is independent, doesn't penetrate anywhere, 
He sees what is happening on the stage, and this is a mistake because the scientist lives in the same world that he researches. Even more so, it is known to us, it is known now that data of scientific research are not independent from who is doing research, not in the sense, in the sense of modifications. It depends on how he asks the question, how he impacts on what's happening. It is absolutely clear to us that in this world where we get the ethics and the views will play decisive role. Without ethics, the future is not good. Shakespeare, sorry, not Shakespeare, Einstein wrote, I know for the last time started to read the letters of Einstein and his commentaries, and it happened to be very interesting. And he writes a thing that many people heard of out of the new things. He says, I don't know about the Third World War, but the Fourth, fourth World War will be done by the sticks and stones. So the children are playing too much. Evolution of life on Earth started from the moment when life in unknown way appeared. It seems that evolution has a vector. I worked in evolutional physiology and biochemistry named after section of Institute of Academy of Science. And it seems that I'm supposed to know something because this is my field. However, there are questions that worry me. Evolution has a vector. And if it has vector, it has a goal. So the question is, where did this goal come? And we were educated in the way saying that it works on its own, but I'm not sure. Looks like, based on what we know now, the evolution of flows led us to building of the neural system. In the end, the highest stage of everything is human brain. The human brain does such things that so that we people, as far as we know, unlike other living things that are neighbors on the planet, although you can tell me I'm sure and I'll say I'm not sure because I don't know. And I don't know how to find out. No one knows how to find out. It seems that we're the only ones that don't live in the same world. We live in the physical objects world, such as microphones, chairs, and apples. At the same time, we live in the world that is science world. These are some duplications. We live in the world that we make up our, ourselves. It's not made of the atoms. This is a special world that is born by our psychic. I'm concerned with the question, I don't have this question, why does the universe need us? The universe knows how to live. The atoms know how to spin, how to merge. Planets also know, and the galaxies know. Why do we need a creature that will be exploring the questions of the science? Due to the fact that we have so powerful brain, we develop this world and we operate science science system, and it's like a language understood broadly and other human languages that include mathematics and fine arts and music, the most mysterious thing out of what I know. So we live in this world of doubling. Why do we need repetitions? So real apple is on the table. Why to draw it? It's not a trivial question. And the answer is not this, not to remember. Something else is there. What does art do? Like Lotman said, with Yuri Mikhailovich Lotman, our largest humanitarian specialist in semiotics, I know him well. He says that the art 
does not repeat life, doesn't depict life, doesn't copy life, but art creates life. It creates. First it's made up, and then this life goes, this path. Even even more so, art creates mental objects that later, perhaps, will appear. It looks into the areas that don't exist yet. The level of my speech is this. Don't perceive art as uh, the third or the extra to the serious things. So we do serious things and then you're supposed to go to museums for the educated people, listen to the music. No, not this. But this is not what we're talking about. The art is a different way of exploring or even creation of the world. So Lotman, that is shown on this picture, he said that along with other wonderful things that people, only creatures capable of reflection about knowing, knowing about knowing about knowing on, of himself, themselves. We don't even give commentaries to what we're looking at and what we think, but we also comment how we think. So this is double window. Reflection is like the only thing left to our humankind, considering cognitive capacity compared to the highest representatives of our neighbors on the earth. It seems that others don't reflect, but I'll repeat, I cannot drop the cards on the table, because how do I know that dolphin is thinking when he swims or has fun? I don't know, and I will never know. How much we depend on our brain? One of the major scientists writes to each of us seems that we have the leadership role. I have his article in my home that what the best is the best trick. The joke is that he, this brain, it brains, does on its own. It's self-sufficient monster. Good or bad, we'll not discuss. It does it, it, does it on its own. That's not the limit, because afterwards he sends us consolation signals. Don't worry, it's like psychotherapy. The right hand is warm, left hand is cold. You made it up, you're a responsible person. And if it's true, there is a data that allows us to believe that this is so. I don't have to, time to talk about this. If this is so, it's a destructive thing. It means that the rest is a joke and love. So it seems that we're big programs, nothing else. Don't think that I go away from the artificial intelligence. I'm coming from the other end because our question is, we're afraid of artificial intelligence. We're afraid to lose control over situation, to have control over artificial intellect. And this is what I'm trying to imply. One of the questions that is seriously discussed in the world, that what's more important, how born and how educated, genes or cultural environment, genes or how you were formed, since there's an interest to the gifted children and uh, they catch capable people that everyone understands that civilization is moved by few people. I don't remember in recent years that Aristo, Plato, Schopenhauer, Mozart, I didn't see. The geniuses are born, I am asked oftentimes, or the genius can be brought up. Once again, it's different topic. The genius are born, they may not become genius if they're not lucky, because genius is how you are born and how things work out. You have to be in good environment, be in good hands, and you have to work hard for a long time. 
But this is working hard is their joy. Our civilization depends on the genius or from the capable people. I'm not insisting on the term genius. Yes, it does depend. I already said, what about control? In our head, we have powerful neuro neural network, the most complicated. You cannot even remember if all these filaments that we have in our head, I'll show you, put in one line, will have horrible numbers. It's not Einstein, not Beethoven, but in the head of every person. It's a horrible thing, and look how it looks. It's electronic photography of a portion of brain. And I want to understand how this network can work when I look at it. How to send information to this neural network, and this information comes, I'd say, that neurons that I showed you the numbers about, that inserted into other cells that are called glial. I'm not reading anatomy class. It's even ten times more. I don't know whether there are words in the language that reflect such numbers, because every neuron shown here can have from 50 to 100,000 links to other portions of brain. If we multiply, we'll have quadrillion. If we multiply by 10, the glial cells, by the way, have all memory. They're not neutral. They have their job. So we have a number. I don't know how to call this number. Even if we go deeper, if we magnify it, it looks like this. Nothing colorful. Colors that I showed you is done to make sure that you can see cells of different types, but with this we deal. And we want to compete with this, creating artificial intelligence. This is done by cognitive science, so called convergence knowledge. This is the area where I operate. It's multidisciplinary. I will not waste time on reading that you can read from the slide. This falsehood. There are more, more some faucets as the representative of the science. I say that I'm disappointed because in this figure we have practically everything. And I'm thinking, what is non-cognitive science? which is metal science, because from this side you can come to anything. Anyways, it's an important thing. And what I was hinting, Einstein writes, the basis of all natural science is the characteristics of the external world are independent of the perceiving subject. Researcher sits on his own and observes. This is how it was. And this is how, what years, Niels Bohr and all the team, Geisenberg, Schlesinger, they state that observer in the quantum world, we don't have time to discuss it for a long time, he says that in quantum world, the observer is part of the scientific paradigm. My favorite cat, I like cats, but the favorite cat is Schrodinger cat. And if you had experience with this, this cat reveals itself when you look at it. When you don't look at it, he is sitting in his can. You don't know anything. We were consoled that such sujets are characteristic for this micro-micro world, the quantum world that to us, people living in this big world, it has nothing to do. So there are big doubts, by the way. And the Roman Club report says that scientific data depends on who does science. 
Alexei Ukhtomsky, genius, genius Russian physiologist, unfortunately, who lost this game with Ivan Pavlov. My sorry, because I don't like Pavlov and I like Ukhtomsky. It's a fact of my life. Ukhtomsky says there is no object without a subject and there is no subject without an object. I doubt very much that he, in his years, knew about quantum games. He's not the only one. We don't have time. If we had time, I would show you a lot. Vladimir Zinchenko, now dead, the largest psychologist, his own world is being built from inside. Think, what is this external world? from inside. If we look further, then the question is, that is in the bottom, why are we so sure that logical ideas and mathematical proof are applicable to the real nature? Why do we decide that nature is subject to the laws that we made up? Of course, we have to recall Galileo, who said the nature by mathematical law, knowledge. This is Galileo. What the creator wrote, it's another question. Boris Rauschenbach, a largest academician, who really is not humanitarian, but I remember he created fuel for the missiles. He writes that mathematics, mathematics doesn't have instruments that help to separate substantial from non-substantial, important from non-important. It can do a lot, but when we talk about that, we pay attention to this. And then I pay attention to that. It's not mathematics job. It's not the question of statistics. We don't have time to discuss it. That's why he wrote that real picture, what we see and what we study, the picture that is on our brain. What's the consequence? We are radically dependent on brain. I missed Kant, Kant said, Immanuel Kant said, opposite to what Galileo said. The mind doesn't take away the laws of science from the science, but ascribes its opposite thing. So we have such mathematics because we have such a brain. I don't make a statement, but I believe that one of the powerful points of view Physics run the brain. We study brain with powerful modern technologies. But what physics is my question. I recently asked the question. It's Newton, it's Einstein, or it's Niels Bohr. It's different physicians. Which physics acts in the brain? I'd like to know. But also, I'd like to know what mathematics runs the brain. It's Pythagore, mathematics, Riemann, Laplace, what mathematics? There are many mathematics. Why we're so certain? When we build artificial intelligence, we say that we know what algorithms in the real brain. And then, according to image of the real brain, such device, are they only algorithms? And by the way, what algorithms? I have three pictures there. First is the portrait of a man who, before Turing played games, in the middle is Turing. And the first is the portrait of a Russian professor, Professor Kolsakov, I believe, 80s of the 19th century, when he created artificial intelligence. He did job that Turing later, not in hardware, but don't forget his name, or these are new aliens. Einstein said the most important things, he said, are made intuitively. Discoveries are made intuitively. With the logarithmic ruler, you cannot plan to make discovery. It's like hits you. It's like you bang your head or it comes in your sleep, but different things happen. There are many examples. If you read memories, letters, commentaries of the big scientists, I insist that you have to read you know, the commentaries of the artists and 
musicians, but mathematics, chemists, people of the heavy science, and they all write it. They say intuition and inspiration. The other question is that intuition of a man that has walked long path. It was created an algorithmic thing, and then it Einstein said the intuition is the holy gift. It's interesting that physicist Father Pavel Florensky said, I will not read in order to make a breakthrough, it takes our conscious to shake. It should be the mind doesn't control what is happening, and you come to different states. And a lot was written about this. We cannot pretend that this is the fiction literature. It's too serious. And we study brain. Can we see what is happening in the brain when young students or the graduates come to me and they say they want to do brain? And I'm asking, what you plan to see if it's not a secret? You open it and it will be written. What is there? What's in the brain? The pictures that I showed you. You will not be able to see. It means that it's supposed to be, because I'm doing this, I complain about life. This is very confusing, very complex experiment that takes six minutes. But you have to prepare uh, that for two years, so as to interpret it later. Therefore, we, are in, we cannot see anything there. <clears throat> Daniel Dennett, another quote, a uh, major philosopher dealing with the human um, uh, psychology. It's um, our mind and, uh, is nothing more than a collection of trillion upon trillion of cells and neurons. Yuri uh, Lotman once said skeptically that, of course, uh, you can decompose a calf into stakes, but you cannot uh, collect it and build it back. So that's, uh, <clears throat> uh, even if you look into every neuron, every cell, you will not have a complete picture. Daniel, it's a kind of contradiction here. He wrote here that the human uh, freedom is not illusion, it's an objective phenomenon. So if we are just a collection of neurons, a good software, a good program, a very sophisticated, a refined program <coughs> that sends uh, certain signals, if this is so, what kind of a uh, free will we can talk about? There's uh, nothing to blame me for. There were some uh, uh, trials uh, uh, that uh, they were saying, it's not me, it's not my blame. It, was, it happened in the United States. It was a real uh, trial. It's not me, it's my mind that uh, made it, which destroys the basics of our civilization, the fundamentals, which means that uh, the, I... Uh, it's not my fault uh, that I was born a criminal. So there are debates around that, uh, symposia, conferences, discussing these issues. Uh, there was a very interesting neurosurgeon, uh, Wojno Sinetsky. Uh, he was also an archbishop. Uh, he made operations on a human brain, and when he opened a human skull, he said, I never saw any wisdom, any uh, reason there. So the same happened to Gagarin when everybody uh, uh, was asking him after his first flight, uh, have you seen the god? Because he ha could, did not see the god. So Gagarin did, did not see god. That means god does not exist. So, But the fact that he did not see that it does not uh, mean that uh, the god does not exist. So if you don't see this in a uh, <coughs> certain picture on the program, does it mean that it doesn't exist there? Uh, human minds and brains uh, vary. Um, artists' brains are structurally different. Here, um, a question is raised, uh, uh, chicken or an egg, what comes first? Because 
they have a different type of structure uh, and therefore they became uh, Mozarts or uh, because they played violin and uh, they uh, became Mozarts as a result of playing violin. It's not an artistic picture, that's just the result of uh, tomographic tomography uh, scanning uh, the connectivity uh, scan, a screenshot of connectivity scan. So here is a, a musician's uh, uh, brain. Can you, you see how many zones, how many areas there are there? Well, uh, if we think in metaphorical sense, uh, does, what uh, does it remind you of? It uh, reminds me most of all the jam sessions. It's like jazz uh, club. When musicians, uh, in our case, these are neurons. They live where they, they have to live. Uh, they have their own uh, house in a certain area, but to complete a certain assignment, to to do something, they have to get together, but they do not have a conductor, uh, which is quite important. They do not have a script, and many of them have never even met each other before, but they still can uh, make an orchestra, so they play a tune and then they go back to their homes. But the main question uh, that arises here, why Einstein and also Sherlock Holmes, the virtual Einstein, so, so to say, why they played violin? Everybody knows that they played, they couldn't play well. It was a very bad violin playing. So my version, uh, I think it's a serious uh, uh, hypothesis, uh, I cannot prove it, but I think it can be proved uh, by experiment, because they had to reconnect uh, to switch their brain to an, over to another mode, another function, and that's how they managed to do that. And that's how they, uh, they it, uh, the best... Uh, uh, results that we've seen in um, in our civilization came about, so it cannot be calculated on a calculator. We don't know how they were doing this. Well, well, well we, we know that they uh, did it with their hand, but we didn't understand how they uh, came about it, how they arrived at it, how this music came into being at all, and what happens with this uh, music uh, if we play uh, further until we disappear from this planet. So if we, Trump, Mr. Trump and Kim Chen in push the red buttons and we disappear, whether the music will remain in this case. Well, I'm not talking about the scores, the music scores. Uh, if there is no Shakespeare, if there is no human being who can read uh, Shakespeare, uh, then it's not a volume written by Shakespeare, it's just a physical object. Uh, if there are no creatures who will be able to understand the music, it means there is no music, no Mozart for a mosquito. But there are also other uh, considerations. The beauty of the mathematical conclusions, for those who understand it, uh, it's the same object of beauty just as the Madame, uh, Madame Cluny Museum academician Ludwig Fadeev he died last year. Uh, he was um, a prominent mathematician, but he was also a professional musician. He was uh, going to uh, enroll in a uh, conservatory even. But I asked him, what are you going to do with mathematics then? He said, no, mathematics is uh, for humans, but if there are no humans, uh, no music. I don't want to argue about that, that was just one of the viewpoints. Scanning the musicians' brains um, reveals that um, it's not only the art uh, productions, uh, just as, for example, this picture here with, with the unicorn from the uh, Paris Museum can 
make certain impressions. But also the theorem, the mathematical uh, formulas can also produce a sense of beauty. So it's not the, it depends on who looks into that. So these are masterpieces. But the masterpieces are not here on the picture. The masterpieces are in the mindset. Here we can just see the physical objects. What was before and what will be next? Let's make a guess. In 2010, the first creature came into being, which is a composite of a life and uh, not life uh, nature, synthetic genome. Um, uh, Craig Venter created uh, this life organism with a synthetic genome. Well, I can imagine a future where you would see um, uh, some kind of tool uh, kit for children, you know, like a, a young uh, genetics scientist who would be able to create this kind of genomes. So it's very interesting to see what's going to happen in this case. That was I already said in my introduction when Kasparov uh, was defeated by uh, the deep blue computer in chess. The uh, humanity uh, shattered, uh, shattered at this uh, thought. But when uh, we analyzed that, uh, we sort of calmed down, including Kasparov, because the deep blue was trained, was drilled to play with a specific player. So that computer knew everything about Kasparov, uh, everything he did with the chess figures. And it was not a fair play because the computer do not have, uh, cannot, do not have a sense of fatigue. Uh, he cannot uh, become excited or nervous, and the speed, the rate of operations uh, is incompatible with the human uh, intelligence, with the, hu with the speed of human thought. Well, of course, we uh, were defeated in terms of speed, and, uh, but uh, we have not uh, uh, lost uh, this game in terms of other uh, aspects. So we were tang, so the, the monsters will not be able to play Go uh, game. And uh, they did quite well as they uh, played with the champions and defeated the champions. Uh, but there are other things uh, as well, other tricks. Uh, so here, for example, this uh, computer program, DeepMind, was created by the AlphaGo system, which can uh, win a victory not only against uh, Go champions, but uh, the best version of Alpha Zero uh, can uh, play Go, Sogi, and chess. But the, uh, most importantly, they don't have any, in, they don't need any initial knowledge. They all, it only needs the rules of the game. So it's enough 24 hours to learn how to play better than any other human being. And the specialists are appalled uh, when they see that. They, but it can also defeat computer progress, a, a strong computer software. So at a high rate, at high speed, it is capable of learning too fast, collecting enormous uh, amount of knowledge. I thought about poker uh, because it's quite a different uh, game, but they, uh, the um, software uh, Libratus uh, program was created it's quite recently. Uh, they've done this and they played with four best poker, poker players uh, uh, outplaying them, of course, uh, and winning about 1.7 million. Well, of course, uh, you know, it was just a, a piece of hardware, uh, which uh, says that AI now acquired the features that not only algorithmic features, they are somehow stepped, have stepped onto our territory. I'm uh, winding up, yeah? So shall I shall I wind up my presentation? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, so uh, when we see when we re we reach the real, uh, we will be really successful. Uh, if we think about the uh, those who invented a needle or a spoon, 
But uh, at a certain point in time, somebody uh, decided that we can transfer this knowledge beyond the area of uh, psychological strata. So some people just uh, drew these pictures, and that's how they created the so-called external storage external memory storage. But that's a different kind of external storage right now that we're talking about. Nicholas Carr wrote a bestseller book uh, where he wrote, once I was a scuba driver, diver in the sea of words, now I zip along the surface like a, a guy on a jet ski. So I looked at the different objects from different sides. So, in other words, uh, he managed to uh, 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 use this surf uh, on the surface uh, without looking into the uh, sea. So, another uh, thing that is quite alarming and uh, uh, which is our concern is internet addiction. I think that's a kind of a trite thing that we've spoken about, but there are scientific data which say that we are, all of us are in internet, all of us have to work on computer. I cannot write by pen now, yeah, uh, by, uh, but what I uh, would like to say that since it's a kind of an addition, they provide a picture of our brain, which means that the changes in our brain are similar to our uh, narcotics or alcohol addiction. That means uh, computer illness, computer disease. That's it's, it's a real addiction. So that uh, addiction leads to serious things. Uh, it's a kind of a transformation of our brain, affecting everything. If we take a kettle now, is trying to. Uh, for example, to make a green tea that will have an uh, impact on our brain. Everything affects our brain. Our brain is a kind of a device that has to uh, restructure, rebuild itself uh, all the time. I'm really uh, excited by the uh, thought that it's a huge neuron network that has to be adjust readjusted and rewritten every second so for example we want to make a green tea it's not like making a green tea or a white tea or a red tea it has to be it is rebuilt reconstructed uh, entirely it's not like a cellar or a basement or a library. It's a kind of a live organism that is changing all the time. You cannot remember one and the same thing twice, as you cannot uh, cross the same river twice, because uh, the uh, water flows all the time. As soon as you remember something uh, for the third time, you remember not what you remembered uh, the first time, but uh, you remember something that you uh, remember from the second time. Marshall McLuhan, who wrote about this a long time ago, he said that uh, humanity will um, um, go over to another uh, species, uh, the so-called Homo sapiens auto-creators. Uh, like chips and everything. I don't want even to talk about this right now. But that's around us. Uh, uh, sorry for this uh, pathetic uh, um, lecture, but we are already in another civilization. It's already inside. It's already within us. We are within this civilization. It is changing at a fast pace, and we are really scared by the speed, by the rate it is moving ahead. The things that used uh, to take uh, hundreds, uh, uh, decades, uh, centuries. Now it can be done within days and hours. It's a very volatile, it's transpa a transparent world. Each of us has a gadget in our bags, so we don't have to talk about this. Uh, this is an unstable world, and it's very fast. It's a hybrid world, and uh, it's a kind of um, uh, flashing and glimpsing world. It's a different world, uh, not the world we lived in five years ago, and it's irreversible. That's why it is of global importance. We have to uh, understand this. We now find ourselves on a different earth. It is really dangerous, so we will have to choose between freedom and security. 
Well, perhaps we would be able to combine this somehow, but the fact is, as a matter of fact, that it's quite uh, convenient for me when I have something in my pocket, uh, something that I can uh, read the uh, Library of Congress uh, uh, every, any minute I want, but uh, when this thing tells me what I, I had for dinner yesterday and what kind of bag I bought yesterday, that's another thing. If I don't want people to know about this, uh, I, I would prefer to throw it away. Stanislav Lem, a famous Polish writer, wrote, uh, for example, uh, if uh, in the old past, uh, when there were some wars and uh, uh, miles or kilometers uh, 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 and huge distances between people, you can uh, probably uh, correct some mistake if you move something. But now when the computers are in place, we're talking about enormous speed, uh, enormous rates. And, so, and he was saying about um, ac an accidental, uh, some accidental things uh, uh, from the micro world, the systems uh, can make mistakes very fast. So the world um, I once uh, read, uh, uh, so the world has be uh, become immeasurable in human terms, because there are now some values which are no longer can be measured. We do not live in nanoseconds. We do not live in nanometers. We are not there. But in the meantime, that's what an active uh, they, that they've become an active players in our civilization. We cannot close our eyes to that. And I've already mentioned that it's irreversible. It's already happened. It arrived. And we have to learn how to live in this world, how to get education. Uh, so we, ha we now have the Internet of Things, uh, self-organization of uh, networks, the digital reality that has become a major player on the evolution, uh, in the uh, area of evolution. I mean, uh, you have to learn not how to uh, push buttons, but how to orient uh, yourselves in this world. If I, I only know how to make pancakes, I uh, belong in another category of people, so I have to live with that somehow. So that's a kind of a world that cannot be measured in human terms. So we need to agree how not to lose our basic um, ideas uh, of reality. I'm not talking about professional system, a virtual uh, reality. Um, it's a kind of um, space suit, you know, that you have to put on in interactive space suit. Uh, you are affected by something. There are uh, you touched by someone, uh, smell. Um, uh, hearing, so there are every ki all kind of systems that are present in that. So when we uh, to, uh, begin to understand what kind of a world we uh, uh, find ourselves right now, a few years ago, one of the players uh, told us it was in the early 2000s, maybe in the year 2000. So one of the uh, persons uh, who played a computer game sitting at home. It was, he was an adult, and there was a, uh, some frog that had to uh, jump. So he played this uh, game, and then it turned out that he had no bread. So he decided to go to the uh, local baker, but he was unable to cross the Nevsky Avenue because he just uh, sort how to jump like the frog jumped in the computer game. So he had to come back home. It's like a joke, but that reminds us of something. So it's virtually the last slide, so I'm not going to torture with that any longer. A serious question and uh, that lawyers are so concerned about uh, law and uh, morality. Uh, so that's a category that has another configuration with inside within our uh, digital world. That's what Anatoly Chubai said, a driverless car uh, that in California hit someone and who is responsible for that? So there are a lot of issues here that we face right now. There are books on psychology where when they have to deal with uh, psychological dilemmas. If you turn right, you hit five persons, and if you turn left, you hit one person. Where you have to turn at this point? So this kind of information should be uh, built, uh, should be entered into the machine. 
So these are the moral categories have to be uh, entered uh, in the computer. And who owns all that? What do we have to do about that? If I'm saying that these are my parents uh, uh, who are to blame, they uh, so they, I was born uh, with such bad genes. So who is responsible for that? So these are the questions not from the digital digital world, but from the moral, from the humanitarian world. In addition, so, for example, we've given everything to these machines. What are we going to do then? When I'm told that the people released in such a way uh, will play musical instruments and will write uh, sonnets, uh, well, I tend to believe that it's a kind of a joke. Uh, the uh, leisure civilization, there is a term like redundant people in the classical literature. The people have nothing to do. They will have to be paid so uh, they, they would not uh, die of hunger, but the, what they are supposed to do. That's a quite a serious question. It already happened in the uh, ancient Rome. That's why for our civilization, it's uh, time now to stop and to think uh, where we are right now, how we can cope with that, we, how we can cope with these challenges. My favorite philosopher, Immanuel Kant, uh, reminded me that our major reference points is uh, the starry skies over us and the moral law inside us. So we have to make friends with this latter one. We won't be able to digest this civilization unless we have some powerful internal uh, orientation point. So, by the way, uh, uh, regarding the report of the Roman club, uh, let me uh, cite a phrase for that, the value-based, uh, uh, the valuable basics of education. We have to understand this. So, we should understand that it's not uh, just uh, pushing a button to receive a diploma from Stanford or Harvard or the St. Petersburg University. So, every child can get information from uh, that. But we are talking about the emphasis, what is important, what is not important, what can be done, what is allowed, what is not allowed, and who is supposed to make a decision on that. And my final slide is like that. Artificial intelligence, is it capable of swallowing up that? It is capable of seeing that we have the uh, image recognition systems and so on and so forth, but you can see that, but it's an one thing, but whether you would be able to understand this, to comprehend this. When I go toward the Hermitage uh, Museum and uh, my son, uh, who is uh, 4. Uh, uh, 34 years old, uh, who says that there are better uh, artists than Matisse, I'm not talking about the black square, uh, but if it is, there is something inside, if you don't have the, the training, the, uh, if your knowledge is not uh, ready for that, you won't be able to see properly the image, the object that is before you. We have to be ready for that. We must be prepared. Are we prepared or are we just scanners, like a machine that scans labels? So there are questions that we are facing, the same questions that were in ancient times, who we are and if we are going to compete with the supercomputers, who is going to uh, resolve a certain task faster, it's over now. We are already defeated by the supercomputer, but that's different. I don't want to wrap up at this point. I don't want to sound as a total alarmist. Unfortunately, I live in the same world, and I have to spend quite much time in the computer every day. That's the kind of a world we live in right now. But there are certain dangers uh, uh, that uh, are developing at a very uh, at a high speed. Uh, my last hope was with a poker uh, card game because there is a face there. You can you can deceive, you can cheat on someone. Dude, I thought that machine would not be able to deal with that, but I was wrong. Thank you very much. I thank you very much, uh, Tatiana Vladimirovna. So let's have a respite now and um, start shooting questions. Uh, may I ask just one question? I, I don't want, I'm not going to interfere any more. As I listened to, as I was listening to Tatiana Chernigovska, 
I was trying to think about the last question that you put at the very end of your presentation. The, or talking about this enormous challenge, uh, I don't really quite understand right now how we're going to deal with that, how we're going to respond to that. But the humanity has been here uh, for thousands upon thousands of years. So you look, uh, take a wider look at the entire history of humanity over the, uh, um, the overall history. Were there any compatible challenges uh, facing uh, humanity? I'm not a historian of human civilization, but as far as I know, I think there were no such challenges before. But I'm scared, uh, not by the scale of that volcano, rather, but by the speed uh, at which uh, it is uh, going forward. Uh, we just don't have time to get accustomed to that because there are too many topics that we have to think about uh, uh, quite seriously. And these are the questions that we uh, always thought like, uh, you know, a speculation uh, uh, on the uh, couch. Uh, you can lie on the couch and think about this. But right now we have to think seriously about this, what we are going to do about that. Because the speed of uh, all these uh, of what's happening around is too high. And we are hardly capable of tracing that. Um, you know, how the our children education should look like and what about our universities. Let me cite an example. When I was at the first uh, year in uh, university, there was a teacher who came to uh, the classroom with a yellow booklet, uh, uh, she wrote it, and she was reading this uh, yellow booklet. And I thought, my God, why should I? Uh, go through this uh, competition just to uh, listen to this reading, because I can read myself. Why should I travel to another, uh, you know, point in my city to listen to that book? I can just lie on my sofa and read the same book while chewing uh, some candies. So if you strengthen this point, uh, you know, a teacher who comes to the classroom just to talk uh, about uh, his knowledge, he is not needed. Uh, because this kind of knowledge should be uh, produced and should be developed by another uh, means. It's a virus. It's a virus. We need to infect uh, them with something. If, if they are in the trap, you can do something. So people uh, must be interested in what they're learning and what they're doing. If they're not interested, it's just it's, there's no point. You don't have to spend t your time to waste your time and money on that. As the same uh, in the universities, you must have people who are capable of explaining, uh, even in a provocative manner, as they can, I don't know, maybe with children the same, they can uh, provoke a kind of a protest. Uh, um, some kind of disagreement. This should be kind of a people whose brain is not uh, yet clogged uh, by uh, some matter, you know. Thank you very much. And the same happened in our institute. Uh, the trainer of the history of the Communist Party who read the conspect, the notes. Actually, we had the same situation in our lives. There is a question. Thank you very much, Anatoly Borisovich. You asked key question in my view. But the answer, of course, it was there. But your answer is absolutely right, as it seems to me. You know, your lectures are very exciting and create many questions. And I'll try to collapse into two questions. All these threats happened because of the mass lack of knowledge of genetics. And the second question that can help to find answer in the artificial intelligence, we are afraid of the revolt of the machines. By the way, your lecture I perceived is the history of idealism. It comes to the evolution theory and personality, personality of Bagumilov. Can it happen to machines? Thank you very much. Thank you. This is very interesting what you said. I myself, unfortunately, maybe luckily, don't do artificial intelligence. 
but oftentimes I participate in all kinds of seminars and conferences. I know what's happening there. As far as I understand, such thing in the artificial intelligence development doesn't happen, but I'm not the person who is responsibly answer this question is the first about genetics. I don't think that it will help us much. Of course, genetics should be known. Suppose we know, all of us know about the methods that are being applied by geneticists today, and it's very explosively growing science. How will it ha help us? I don't think that this will help us, but since you mentioned genetics, then I would say that this is one of the sciences that is the large players in the field that we discussed today, because only genetics gave us during last year's information about our past so much that we never had, and we didn't even have a hope to gain this information. When it became possible to research ancient DNA that was not possible even several years ago now. Hundreds of thousands of years helped to analyze the remnants of people so we can know what nations, what relatives, what their genes that uh, provide linguistic capacity. Um, my half is linguist. When did human language came about? It will take another three hours. I don't suggest to have discussion like this. We don't have memorials, but it is known that there is human, human version of FOXP2 gene that provides communication. It's not gene of language, the way the newspapers and magazines write. However, there is a gene that alternated, and it's not the way it was in animals, and it provides communicational capacity, including opportunity to articulate. The implication is that the beginning of human language can be moved by tens or maybe hundreds of thousands of years back. And this is our history. If I were to start life, I would become genesis. I'm very jealous. More questions? Question from here. Thank you, Evgeny Mikhalikin, Association of the System Management Association. My question, humankind for thousands of years faces with what is faster, stronger, the, break, the brick is stronger than human bone, the de iron is denser, the animal's muscles allow animals move faster than a human. The mechanism is the mechanism, doesn't matter what is the speed of operation. The principal difference in self-assessment of something, is it possible to self-acknowledgement? Is there a scientifically justified forecast of when it will happen, if it is possible in principle? I deliberately avoided this nightmare, but didn't manage. What this threat of the revolts of the machines, it's an old story, but what we are afraid is if artificial intelligence have the consciousness, and then it comes, and what is the consciousness? I'd like to know, because I participate in this commotion on a regular basis, I know for sure that not only consensus, there is a full nightmare, because the consciousness is understood like this, the broad spectrum, the consciousness is character of any human being, of even the separate cell, all the way to reflection, and people have consciousness, and not Hochtili say not all people, but small percentage, but the thing, are there many people on the earth that discuss what we discuss now, or thought even once in their lives. There are very few people like this, so we have to move it outside of the limits of the consciousness of children, all highest animals, including dolphins, about which I don't want to talk now. 
they live for 60 million years. And how long do we, do we live? 250,000 years. What's in their hands? I work with dolphins. Their brain is more complex than our brain. It's very big. It doesn't matter that it's bigger. It's complex brain. I'm answering your question so long because first criteria. My question was, question to our colleagues. We had a uh, dis discrepancy with our colleagues. How I, there's a problem in the science that is called the model of zombie. If there's a man standing before you who certainly behaves like a man, speaks, but we know that he is this program. It's not a real person to have chance to find out who is the program, who is not. I'm answering you, no. That's why my question to my colleagues was, consciousness is function of complexity, that is, it's growing, 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 mice, cats, Einstein, so there is serious brain with consciousness. So the system, it's about artificial intelligence. The system comes to certain borderline and automatically consciousness is created. We don't have to believe in this. That's the first question. Second question, how do we find out? We have a chance to find out. In the past, at the sunrise time of all this conversation about computers, there was a program, maybe you remember, it was called Alice. Very simple. It's about Turing. By the way, I have another idea. I even wrote it somewhere. I thought many people can get by without Turing. Are they people or not people? If with the system there was simple conversation, had to understand, do you talk to a machine or not a machine? And honestly it said, how are you doing? And says, how are you doing? He asked question, how is your family? Is things fine? No, it's not so good about our parents relationship, especially with the father, difficult to talk, it says, come on, I have so problematic relationship with my father to create this dialogue, it takes four minutes, it's very simple, even more so, people are extremely happy after talking to this artificial Alice, because no one wanted to listen about the problem with father, except for this piece of iron that is not listening itself, has problems with the father. So why I'm saying this, this is a simple thing and the complex thing. How do we find out if, save us God, this thing truly has reflection and self-consciousness? What does it mean? It will have the plans, the own motives, own life plan on this planet, and we're not included. There are several films, although I don't like such things, I don't watch them, but there was a good film, Lucy. There were some funny things about it. I was at the prime showing in Russia. I hardly ever go to movies. And it was daytime, not many people. And it says that the screenplay was written by Chernigovsky. Without laughing, there are many serious things. It was interesting film transparency when a man transformed into the network. It was moved into the network. It's a games in Hollywood. But they still have some hinting. We'll be able to know if this if this contagious thing will have its own plans and motives, we're not needed, it will say, what, why are they here? At her, not because of the political correctness, whether there will be new opportunities, for instance, in genome to put something or to make locusts to multiply that will have 100 billion, it will eat everything, and there will nothing to eat for us. Electricity, there are many things. 
I don't want to threaten you, but I want to say it's a problem. We may not even learn or when we discover and we understand. It's not a coincidence. Are we sure? Are you sure that everything is fine? I'm not sure because the creator makes perfect program. It's all possible to do. It's the question of a short period of time with reflection, with self-consciousness, yes. It's difficult to create human organism. This dialogue is not going to work. Answers and que questions and answers. Please introduce yourself. Hello. Financial holding from Switzerland. I have a question. Mrs. Chernikovsky. I think it's Mellendorf who said that there is an associative intuition. Children from their child years, the certain associations that transform into more intuitive power that at the end it gives a push towards explanation of the world in order to create comfort. The fear in your point of view does it push human person so that it will be easier to live. How do you think? Is it a factor inside of what we are afraid of, for instance, I don't want to, to say about Herman Oskarovich. I look at the emblem of Gaidar Forum a feeling. It says Gref. <laughs> Please understand me correctly. I apologize. I have nothing against. It's about what I was saying. Everything in the hand. If we sidetrack a little bit, nothing funny, desire to create comfort, mathematically explain what's next to you, how does it seem to you, is there opportunity for the firstborn scene that makes us scared and we fear of losing I'm a former scientist, so I'm very interested in what you said. Sorry. I always didn't like Eve. But as for fear and everything, I'll sidetrack a little bit. We live in the world where we have stress. We cannot manage stress, and it's so heavy world. Was it not heavy and not dangerous in the past? Imagine for a second that you're in a jungle. You don't have skin, feathers, claws, and you're naked, and hell knows what's happening around you, dangerous animals, dangerous fellow countrymen. In the past, people thought that Neanderthals existed, and then we appeared. It was a long time when we have different homos. Can you imagine such a picture? Imagine in your house you have a cat, which is not quite a cat. It's almost a cat. It's horrible. It was always there. I don't think that only fear, because our main civilization achievements, such as what I showed you, the pictures, great music, great mathematics, and so on, they're not related. There's internal burning. You do it despite of anything. Some people were burned in fires. But there are things that uh, defeat the fear. I don't want to go into the politics because it's so gloomy what uh, role is played by the philosophical and religious morality of different cultures. They will 
defeat civilization because of the idea. Do I wear a hijab or skirt? You can defeat countries, the time of reflection, it's already here, you have to sit and think where we're rushing to. Maybe it's enough, we should say, to ourselves. I don't think that only fear, because humankind history tells us that people are ready to die and suffer for the sake of high goal in their opinion, and maybe not in their opinion, but for some goal, is stronger than life. Lotman, whom I extremely loved and admired in one of his TV shows, thank you to Tallinn Television that in the past he was recorded with the conversations about Russian culture. As I suggest that you work go to network and make a search. And he talks about Decabrist. He says that honor is stronger than life. Stronger is stronger than death. The honor is more important. Without honor, it's worse than to perish. It's important. This is a people of the highest level. We're not mechanisms. I have one favorite subject in the universe, I can tell. It's washing machine. There's nothing than washing machine. But if it disappears, I refuse to exist on this planet. What I mean, if we're ready to make our civilization composed of good washing machines, meat grinders, and other subjects of higher rank, then this is what we are. Who you decide to become, you become this one. What uh, benchmark we established for ourselves, there was a show in Moscow, there's interesting exhibition of the avant-garde of the first half of the 20th century, the architect and painter Yakov Chernikov. He drew things, he was a wonderful painter, he had a thing, he took a sheet of paper and drew from this corner, from your side, it's from here, from this corner downwards, entire picture. It means, it means that in his head, he had this picture in detail, usually it takes composition, it's called smart hand. Brain is drawing, not hand. Michelangelo saw a portion of marble he can use to make a sculpture. He even heard it. He was listening. Are there any caverns? Computer doesn't do such things. It's smell. I think the most precious that we have is the smell. It's ability to have breakthrough to unexpected things. You don't understand anything. You go through the field, see the butterfly, and it's not about butterfly. It's about chemistry, and the butterfly switched on something is horrible. Let me tell you one thing. Do you know that when Einstein died, his brain was stolen? Why do I love scientists? They stole his brain, but luckily they put it in a glass jar in formalin. Since it was, it appeared, it was analyzed, that is very interesting. Einstein had very interesting brain, for instance, he had very dense and the size, corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is a thing that joins left and right hemisphere of the human brain. 
What does it tell you? It says, primitively speaking, that an associative field much broader. I think for this reason he played violin. He did different job, not the one that is 5 plus 6 divided by 184 and put in the power of 6. So we will look for and seems that we can find. This is different move. Interesting, when musicians or artists have this move, we don't expect anything else from them. But it is clear it's their territory. But when, when this move made by scientists, from hard science, Mendeleev, had, along with the vodka, that were thankful to him. He had a hobby. He made suitcases. Why did he make suitcases? I haven't think about which of you makes suitcase it was a hobby. I think that there was something in this business. It made him become something. So it's not simply this way. I don't believe in the coincidences. Thank you. Sorry for not looking your way. It's about microphone. Thank you for a wonderful lecture. I'll try to ask short question, pragmatic one. I forgot to answer. Design magazine. How do you comment your results of the research? For instance, British scientists de have de developed research robot and scientist robot, such as Evo Adam in Samara University. They're trying to make designing robot. They create models there. In your case, when you do delicate things, ethical, valuable things, Where's pragmatics? Where can be applied in the artificial intelligence? I'll tell you like this. It was not one question. It was two questions. The first question, how do we do such delicate things? How we do? I can tell you that things related to what we discuss now, no robot can do. I give example to students. For instance, there's theory, and the theory says, I love you with all my heart. Tell me what you want, and I'll do it for you. I'm so crazy, I tell her. I want to know how the consciousness is in the brain. We'll do it. Just tell me what's consciousness. It's the end of the story. What am I supposed to take out of the brain? What data? That will befit you. I can take anything, but tell me what you need. I cannot answer this question when we work with such delicate things. There comes the question, how to ask the question. We can ask questions to the brain. We have powerful tomographers. I didn't say it. Billions of money used for brain research. Crazy money, because everyone understands that in the case of success, this is absolute success. So there is a reason to throw money. So the device can give you numbers computed by computer later on. We have to ask the right question. And this is not possible. It's only human business for the routine tasks. Yes, I'm sure that automatic systems are needed. Praise the Lord, there will be less mistakes. But for the breakthrough, we need the sorry for shamanism. I don't know how it happened. We'll look and see. This is what I told you in the morning. I don't watch TV, but sometimes I switch it on. It happens. And this was supposed to be switched on. In my books it happened. The books fall on me from the shelves. 
Several years ago, reflexes of the human bisection fell on me. Luckily, this small paperback didn't kill me, but it opened in holy manner. It says what I quote. 1,800 some year, brain doesn't care, it didn't say doesn't care, but can be interpreted this way, it has with real reality, with memories of reality, or with the virtual, my heart stopped, because it was not supposed to know, now what we know, he's genius, Unlike we, he couldn't know what we know now. If we take and put in tomograph head of human man, the head of man that has hallucinations, and we record what is happening when he hears the voices, or when the demons appear before him, then the picture shown will be the same as if the word, it's imitation of when he saw, when he heard. Can you imagine the brain works with anything, can work with the, that it made up himself. But I repeat, I can talk for a long time, so psychiatric date, by the way. It's undervalued share for this research. What is happening there? This violations give us information. What is the benefit from our data? First of all, of course, medicine, because it's diagnostics and rehabilitation. But this is about how to learn it's a big field, how to teach children and adults if brain cannot do something, it cannot not learn, it is learning, but it's not learning like this, like we teach children and how it's written in the textbooks. There's nothing. Why do we research it? We want to know how it it's made, in fact, suppose I'm a linguist, I want to know where's noun, where's the verb. I open the school, are there verbs? I'm a doctor of philology as well, so I have all excellent marks. Did you see verb and the noun? But if there is a patient that after stroke or something else forgot verbs, but remember now is the evidence of the fact that these categories really exist. Therefore, it's quite a huge area. If you could learn how our brain deals with information, that would really uh, transform our um, education. It's quite obvious. I, I uh, stick to conservative views, let all people learn uh, Latin or ancient Greek. But I do a different job, including associations. Well, perhaps it would make sense to teach children, and this data can provide potentially much better results how they can uh, develop their memory, attention, how to garner information that you can trust in, how you can um, avoid uh, stresses uh, and uh, difficult uh, psychological uh, uh, things, how to, to teach something, how to uh, view uh, different things from different angles. For example, if you think that this is a floor, and I think that this is a forest. Well, it's a stupid example, of course, that I cite here, but you understand what I mean. Otherwise, we don't need these people who graduate uh, from schools and universities with the knowledge that everybody has. Why do we need these people? It's just no point. We need people with an open mind, open ears, uh, who have uh, good skin, good eyes. These are a different type of creatures. So that's what happens in Sirius. Uh, you know that uh, special center for gifted uh, children uh, that I'm going to visit soon. And I'm 
uh, a group of uh, children, uh, winners of all contests uh, in mathematics. They asked me to uh, have a tea with them, so I asked them, what about mathematics? Why we believe in mathematics? And a small boy like that, you know, stood up and said, mathematics is the right and correct thing because it, it can be confirmed by physical phenomena and physical laws. And that's quite right. But that's because his brain is not clogged, is not spoiled. Uh, he has an open mind. It's still fresh. Our task is to develop this kind of brain further. Or do you want to stifle this kind of brain? So we have to answer this question. Sorry for, lo for a long answer. Thank you. Your question, please. Anatoly Borisovich, uh, Ross Atom, uh, uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. Let me uh, emphasize the two messages that the art, artist's picture is um, uh, not about the present but about the future and that there are two stages in the scientific uh, production depend on the uh, researcher's um, involvement in that. So. Talking about these uh, messages uh, in uh, Russia and the world uh, today uh, and tomorrow, digi digital economy and so on and so forth, how can you interpret the artificial intelligence in Russia in, uh, and its difference from artificial intelligence in Europe? I have an answer to this question, strange as it might seem to you, although I do not like uh, the stories about the different ways of development. I don't want to play this game, but nevertheless, uh, last summer, um, uh, we made a trip, um, just a, f a group of a uh, few people, to Dalai Lama. That was the first time that the Russian scientists uh, made a tour to Dalai Lama. And so we made some presentations, but the, the, the scientific debate that followed was much more interesting. I'm talking about this because uh, we are not uh, Buddhists, uh, but the uh, Buddhists, uh, they have a kind of a different uh, worldview, uh, gestalt psychology, global worldview. They are looking at this uh, as an integral picture, not a decomposed picture. Uh, just as uh, people in Russia, they have uh, this unique ability looking uh, not at uh, separate stakes made of a calf, but at a live uh, calf, at a live organism. Um, so, by the way, uh, in this report of the Roman club, uh, they write about the role of the observer as a serious player and about the uh, that global non-reductionist, as they put it, um, study of everything. So let's not decompose things. Just to make it uh, clear, uh, let me say that uh, we had uh, many arguments, um, um, sometimes even quarreling uh, with each other. So you are saying that the machinery is getting better and better. And, uh, and we soon would be able to demonstrate every neuron. But why do I need to look at every neuron? There are hundreds of billions of neurons. What's the point? I don't see any point in looking and seeing a neuron cell. And as I said, every neuron has uh, ties, has connections with others. So it, it doesn't matter that I don't see them, but I don't need them, but because that will not provide an answer to my questions, because the whole is not the sum total of uh, the uh, components. It's just a different view, a view from another angle. If we look at the Diana Vishnova, uh, a brilliant dancer, are we measuring the angles uh, of her uh, movements? We just see that it's a uh, brilliant, uh, it's a, a wonderful dance, and it, it, she's very smart, by the way, and we can see how she moves around. So how can you measure that? You just see this as a whole. So as I understand, it's not quite a 
um, an accurate answer to your question. But anyway, the ability. Okay, let me cite another example. One of my colleagues told me that. Um, <clears throat> as he spoke with the editor of a uh, major uh, magazine such as Science and Nature. And um, this is what he said. When I uh, talk to a traditional uh, Western author, everything that he had to say, he was written in, in the article. Because everything is written in detail, every figure, all the gaps and uh, and all the points. But when I talk with a Russian author, well, that's conditional, of course, an author from another culture, let's say. They say, everything is written to him, but let me say the following. So that's my comment to that. So the most valuable is not what he has written, but rather what he has not written so far, because the, it is what is not described in scientific articles. And that's that's just his observation, uh, his uh, subtle feelings. Let me cite another example regarding difference in cultures. Uh, uh, six months ago, I visited a psychological congress in Vienna, and uh, there was a large audience there, and uh, there was a presentation on cross-cultural uh, differences in the mindset. So the question <clears throat> uh, that was asked there, when you come home and you see that your house is in fire, there are two persons inside your mother and her partner. I'm not translating this word because, as uh, Fekla Tolstaya said, is if it's a partner, let him burn down. <coughs> it's a joke. Uh, so someone and the mother, and you can save only one person. Who are you going to save in this case? And what was the, the there was a voting there. So out of this audience, on this audience, there were only five people who voted for saving the mother. Only five. All the rest when I was one of those, by the way, of those five. Uh, as for others, uh, Chinese, Taiwanese, and um, Indians, they are from another culture. So during the coffee break, I was trying to uh, understand and asking them questions how it happened. Uh, but anyway, what was the motive behind that? I asked them about, they said, first of all, they said, I was already born by this mother, so it's quite enough. And another answer is, I cannot do anything about that. And that's uh, my personal choice. I chose the partner. And that's when, who was uh, that partner? The partner, not, not mother's partner, sorry. You misunderstood me. It was not the mother's partner. Of course, no. It, that was the partner of the savior, you know, of the one who rescued him. Well, uh, sorry for um, uh, uh, wasting too much time on this particular subject, but over the last years, uh, uh, there have been too many studies in the area of cross-cultural differences in a mentality, in uh, not, not in the trite sense of this word, in the usual sense of the word, but, but the Chinese calculate in a different way. The Germans, although it's a Western civilization, we are not uh, dividing them into Vietnamese and Americans, but uh, the Germans, for example, when they retell a story, a film, uh, they uh, decompose them uh, into different blocks, as, unlike other uh, people from other cultures. So not everyone thinks in Aristotle uh, mode. So if you want to use Aristotle thinking, you were supposed to get Aristotle type education, which is not present. So we are not born with that. So I mean that uh, with the culture we live in, so much depends on the type of science they, that is uh, practiced in the particular culture. Thank you for a uh, very interesting and brilliant lecture. I came here specifically to listen to you. Now, my question is not an answer. You ask what we can do next, what can be done, what is available in Russia. You said measure. That's the key word that you mentioned. 
as I, I would like to say, that's an answer from 1942. Uh, Anatoly Chubais was not here. From That's the answer uh, from the sister of Claude Shannon. If Anatoly Chubais gives me five minutes, I will tell you about this right now. Why this regard from uh, his sister is here and what we can do next. There is an answer, there is a response. The Americans do not have this. Not five minutes, can you formulate it in one minute? Okay. Entropy approach towards dynamic parameters, uh, information processing, uh, how we can measure that. So the only thing that we have to do about this is to find out what information is. That's a question of agreement, convention. If we can agree on certain things, that's it. It's all right. 1942 example. Claude Shannon, he was 26 at that time. Bell, uh, Daniel Bell, uh, when he came uh, to him after the university, he uh, set the task to uh, sort out the communication channel between Europe and America, and he started to measure that. He was only 26 years old. He was uh, his sister Catherine, an uh, elder sister. Uh, she asked him when what, what the problem was about. She told him, take entropy uh, method by Botsman. <laughs> Boltzmann's entropy uh, method and Boolean algebra. Why? Measure. What kind of measure unit you can use? Why entropy? Because logarithmic entropy can be transformed into linear characteristics. The uh, unit of information, one bit of information to measure quantity was developed, was invented by Claude Shannon. And then we, uh, mathematical communication theory came into being, which is the basic of all our civilization. But Catherine warned him uh, at that time when he wanted to publish that uh, paper in 1942. She said, Claude, you are studying only the static status. Uh, not the semantics. Uh, well, semantics is the actual essence. Yes, I said I uh, studied only a syntactic uh, method, and until today, in all our search engines, they use syntaxes, syntax, uh, rather than semantics. You said the verb uh, endings, is, which is dynamics. So we have developed a, a mathematical theory. Uh, Nikolai Salichev has developed a theory uh, and published the book. The entropy of information and the essence of life. And he uh, offered a technology of semantic analysis for anthropic uh, evaluation that will help us to deal with all these problems. But this is not an artificial intelligence or not a neuro. A neural network. I can send you the relevant materials and you would be able to see how and what we can do about it. All right. Peter Machkin, uh, International Congress of, uh, of uh, Industrialists. Well, dear colleagues, uh, well, of course, there is a uh, certain area uh, and uh, that has been developed, which is called formal semantics. This is a very complicated story, a sophisticated story, and those people who deal with that. But there's another issue that all this entropy, how I'm going to measure my thoughts using this entropy method. There was a nice philosopher, Rosanov, uh, and he has a brilliant, absolutely brilliant uh, papers, and one of them, uh, he said, I will go and try to invent thoughts, invent ideas. Okay, so we still have time for a few more questions, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Valentin Kolis of Pankia. Um, we, all of us, have probably survived and lived through this uh, uh, Kasparov's uh, defeat by the Deep Blue and the poker games, but these are simple games with simple rules. So my question is, uh, do you think it's possible to distinguish between these three spheres? The area of artificial intelligence application, the area where the rules are created uh, to make certain decisions, and those material carriers. Well, the program itself cannot make a damage to us. It may 
uh, inflict a damage if it's uh, used by a doctor of an a genome is changed. So in these three spheres, what we can do about that? Because there's something uh, not transparent and a fast algorithm that is moving uh, across these three spheres. And the second question, uh, the instrumental studies of our um, uh, brain, um, um, since uh, if you open the brain, you won't see any intelligence there anyway. Does it remind you of something? Um, you won't be able to see anything with your eyes. That's right. That's true. But what we mean here is that we, if we hope that uh, the more we increase, expand neurons and a group of neurons, uh, we won't be able to see anything there. But, but of course, we will derive certain sense from that, but uh, it's not the sense that we are looking for. But if we want to un uh, learn what uh, a neuron thinks about when it is uh, linked up with another neuron, we won't be able to see this with our eyes. That's why we have to invent uh, traps, uh, tests for our brain, and that's how we can find out where, where it uh, takes that from, how it uh, links up different elements. It's not that I'm totally negative, uh, regarding that we won't be, uh, be able to do anything. We will do something and we'll manage somehow. And while we are talking here, uh, maybe there are hundreds of articles and now probably been posted or released and I won't be able to read all of them uh, on the theme that I'm dealing with. So thousands upon thousands of laboratories, not people, but laboratories work in this area, very well funded, very well equipped. And the question is that there must be a smart person or a good work team that will be able to set a good trap. That cannot be um, discerned uh, with your eyes. So you have to invent something. So, and also, if you get an answer, you have to understand the answer, first of all. Why a philosopher plays a certain role in this story is not a philosopher who uh, taught history of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, I'm sorry for that, but those who have been trained how to think, have uh, been trained in uh, the uh, thinking mental processes. He will help us to formulate our question first and to see the answer, so we, we need to understand the data. So you'll get uh, figures, uh, 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 that uh, will hardly fit into this room. So it's difficult to understand. And this, uh, the second question. Oh, regarding these, uh, the, the uh, components. I'm not a specialist in artificial intelligence, so technically I cannot answer your question. So one of the answers is, uh, right, is like this. So we are, have accustomed uh, to the fact to think that, that the rules are just algorithms, that the rules are what uh, uh, can be subject to Aristotle logics. But this is not so, because in metaphorical uh, applications uh, here and there, uh, it's a bit different. This reminds me something. Oh, this reminds me of something else. Now I understand this is something else. So it's not the uh, logical conclusion, it's just uh, an idea to take a look in a different place. So there are other rules uh, there as well, but of a different type. So therefore, um, I know how to, I can ask a question regarding these rules. I, I can ask this question to those who have developed uh, the system that uh, uh, turned out to be a winner in poker uh, um, card game. What exactly they did so as to understand these new logarithmic uh, moves. We just, um, our education is based on ancient Greece and Rome, and that's how it was built around us, but there are other civilizations, for example, Indian civilization, and they live in a different manner. And that's probably how we can uh, retrain ourselves. So, but that's how we, we were educated. Thank you, dear colleagues. Uh, we agreed that uh, uh, this uh, GAIDAR forum as we agreed, is not only about economics, not, uh, as Vladimir Mao said, 
Uh, there are things that are more important than economics. And uh, I think that's what we uh, witnessed right now. And that's another important uh, area for me, what Tatiana has done to us today. Russia and the world, virtues and values. I think that uh, the Russian elite is uh, sort of uh, zeroed in, uh, sorry for this term, on uh, internal Russian problems and uh, painful spots. But uh, the world is much larger, and it's not, uh, uh, does not amount to just our uh, problems. So the Russian elites uh, are um, sort of separated from the world elite because we are living different, uh, maybe in different measurement systems. We are much too zeroed in on our own problems, on our internal domestic things. And as we find in ourselves in such a situation uh, when, when we use uh, nouns instead of verbs, but there are uh, a lot of global problems that just pass by. Well, of course, the investment climate in Russia is very important, but that's not the in whole life of the country. It's not the life of the uh, humanity. And uh, Tatiana has just explained to us that uh, the challenges of artificial intelligence, uh, the, this, the scale of this challenge is not to uh, separate countries, but to the entire humanity, and the risks are so high that that's the risk of the uh, survival of humanity. And it's this uh, really extremely important for us to under understand that uh, we have to be on the same wave, on the same wave band uh, with everyone. And so uh, uh, our ideas uh, could be perceived by all people across the world, the people who work, um, who deal with the real problems of humanity. So I think these is our, our topics, and uh, Tatiana has a kind of um, charismatic impact on us. I have nothing to do with that. No, no, it's not. Uh, by the way, it's just a continuation of what we were talking about. It's not within my power. It's a kind of a drive uh, that uh, uh, this kind of uh, mystery, you know. It's not that just I have a plan. I cannot uh, explain it. That's, that's the thing, the it, uh, that is kind of self-organizing. Uh, but the thing is that uh, the uh, world elites are not, uh, have a very bad system of uh, preparation, of education. They, uh, we are discussing the things that they are not prepared for. They know about this, of course. But even if they know about this, they think, well, that's the thing. Let philosophers and scientists deal with that. We, uh, we do not care much about that. But the people who are, will be trained, prepared to rule the world, to manage the uh, civilization, they must be prepared for that. They must have a different type of knowledge, uh, different mindset. They should understand what's going on. Otherwise, they just will be trained to push a button. That's it. But we can do without that. There will be a machine who will uh, push these buttons and will provide meat and milk for all of us. I quite agree with that, uh, Tatiana Vladimirovna. We would really, we would really want the Russian intellectuals to be accepted across the world as the real intellectuals. And uh, although you're saying that uh, uh, it's not your fault, uh, I do think that Chernigovska is to blame for everything, for what happens today. So thanks a lot to you. Thanks a lot to the audience. And uh, I think uh, it's a unique case when the level of questions asked here uh, corresponded to the level of the answers. Thank you very much.